Hey everyone, this true of you! Right here, and ready for another video with another top 10 list. And as I've been informed that it's Pride Month this month, I thought it'd be worth starting June off with a video that's sort of relevant by showing you the top 10 gay slash lesbian characters who aren't actually real because this is video games, y'all. Well, my heart's in the right place at least. Usual rules apply here, i.e. only one character per franchise. Couples won't get a joint entry here, as this is only focused on individual characters. And finally, I won't be including any transgender characters, because that could well be its own list, and I don't want to use up any other potential video ideas like that on a whim. Gotta save myself some ideas, know what I mean? Anyway, hit it! Juhani! Yep, the cat-like creature who was once on the dark side team, but thanks to your smooth talking is now on the light side, is here to kick this list off. Now this only really applies if you play as a female character, but if you do, it turns out that she's more than just grateful to you for turning her towards the light. No, in addition to getting her back on her feet, you've also made this kitty purr. Oh god, that was one of the worst intentional puns I've ever done. <coughs> Pussy. Okay, enough now, on with the video. But hats off to this girl, because not only is she cool with openly stating how she feels about you to your face, she's also cool with you being of a different species entirely. And there you have it. The Star Wars universe is far more open to trans-species relationships than our own. Not that I'm into any other species myself, of course. Don't get the wrong impression now, okay? Vamp! Many of you will most likely be unaware of this, but it's pretty much confirmed by the solidified serpent himself. Vamp is introduced to us as a member of those goddamn terrorists that have hijacked the oil rig and are holding the president hostage. Not only that, but he also appears to be immortal as well, being completely impervious to all forms of damage and seemingly cannot be killed. But enough of that, because as it turns out, this dude may well be into other dudes too. According to Snake, there's a rumour going round that Vamp was once in a romantic relationship with a bisexual marine commander. It's implied that Vamp himself is also bisexual, but considering that we have no accounts of Vamp being into women, and only this account of him being interested in guys, I'd be willing to believe that he's more interested in other guys, which is further suggested, in my opinion, by the fact that his sexuality is never brought up again. All we know about is this one former relationship. Dorian! Trust me, Amethyst. Inquisition isn't exactly the first game in the series to include gay or lesbian characters, but if any of them were to jump out at me, then it'd have to be Dorian from Inquisition. Dorian is very open about his sexual preferences, stating aloud that he prefers the company of men, and he really doesn't give a fuck if anyone thinks poorly of that, including his own father, apparently. But good for you, son, who gives a flying shit if you're gay? And considering that none of the female characters in Inquisition are turning me on at the moment, I might just give it a try. I mean, look at that glorious moustache. He must be waxing that shit four times a day. Steve Cortez! Another Bioway game on here, but it's common knowledge that there are same-sex couples left, right and centre in the Mass Effect games. And interspecies relationships too, if that's what floats your boat. But Steve Cortez is worth a mention here. Being only a romantic option if you're playing as male Shepard, Steve has had a troubled past, well, like everyone else, in that he lost his husband a little while back and has been hurting ever since. Though not all male characters are options when it comes to same-sex romancing in Mass Effect, most would agree that Steve Cortez is probably the best guy out of our available options. So just go up to him and ask if you'll bang, okay? Tracer! Oh yeah, I was surprised about this one too when I found out. But Tracer from Overwatch is actually in a relationship with another girl. Sorry to all the male Tracer fans out there who had a thing for her, who now feel like they don't have a chance, but not trying to rub salt in the wounds or anything, but... You never had a chance of her anyway, because she's fictional. Anyway, back on point. 
But in 2016, a webcomic was released showing that Tracer was indeed seeing another girl called Emily. Most likely because of her own sexual preferences, or due to their personalities hitting it off, instead of, say, the developers wanting several LGBT characters present in their game. Trevor Phillips! Now this was a surprising one. For all of the mass destruction and general violent shenanigans that Trevor gets up to, his sexual preference is probably the last thing you'd expect to come up in GTA V. But as it turns out, there is quite a bit of evidence to suggest that in fact he is gay. Though the most you'd probably get out of him is that he might be bisexual, his own mother asks him at one point if he's gay, to which he has no answer for. Apparently he's been in contact with another guy who tells him that his secret is safe, and did also explain why Trevor sometimes wakes up only to find himself wearing a dress. But judging by his reaction to being called out by his mother like that, I'm willing to bet that this would actually explain a lot of his behaviour during the game. The mass killings, the blowing stuff up, even killing Johnny Klebitz. Now, don't get me wrong, Trevor is a f***ed up loon first and foremost, but I'm willing to bet that this secret of his, as well as his attempts of covering it up, is also at play here. Samantha! The problem with Gone Home nowadays is that I feel that even mentioning this game is like asking for SJWs and anti-SJWs to come out fisticuffs on my channel, and it's just as well you guys are awesome because that hasn't happened yet. But I can't do a gay and lesbian themed video and not mention Samantha from Gone Home. Though we never get to meet this character, I'd say that she's one of the main characters here. You arrive back home only to find the place deserted, and as you go through the house looking for any trace of life, you begin to put the pieces together. Because as it turns out, your sister, Samantha, has kind of gone through a tough time, has had a spiritual and personal journey, and has come to the realisation that she's actually falling in love with another girl, while you share in her journey as you find clues about the house. Though you could argue that this is nothing but a walking simulator till the cows come home, you can't deny that it does tell a powerful narrative. Chloe Price! Now, I'm no expert when it comes to knowing what it's like being a lesbian. I know, stop the fucking presses! But as a heterosexual guy, I'm sure I speak for the vast majority of guys in saying that, as a guy, your sexuality is not a choice. You are what you are, end of. But while this might be the same for girls as well, you do occasionally hear stories about how a girl's past might have led her to a change in her sexuality, or perhaps she was like that all along. Like I said, I don't know. The reason why I bring this up, however, is because Chloe Price from Life is Strange has had a very messed up childhood, with her dad being killed in a sudden car crash, only to then be replaced with a step douche. But I'd say that while it's clear that she hates living in Arcadia Bay anyway, leading her to act like a rebel, it isn't until you come to play the prequel and are introduced to Rachel Amber does she finally find everything that she's ever wanted for herself in one person. Rachel is intelligent, funny, spontaneous, but more importantly, motivated to get the fuck out of town and it's no surprise why Chloe ends up falling for her. Rachel is the person who Chloe wants to be, and because they're polar opposites, and we all know what opposites do, it just kind of feels right when they get together. But the main reason why Chloe is so high on this list is because she's awesome. That's literally the only reason why. Kanji Tatsumi! Can't make a list of gay and lesbian characters and not mention Kanji. Kanji Tatsumi is introduced to us as a very cold, threatening and tough character. In fact, the first time the plot begins to include him, we get the impression that he's someone who'd be best avoided, as he's likely to start a fight or cause some sort of damage. But the more you get to know him, the more you realise that he's just misunderstood. In fact, he's misunderstood himself more than anyone, which has led him to push everyone around him away and start acting tough. But there's another reason for him wanting to act tough, because as it turns out, Kanji is secretly into guys. But having recognised this, he's decided to reject these feelings, considering them to be not what society expects of him, thus making him act in a way that seems to be manly and tough. 
But he likes cute things, he likes sewing, and though he does have a massive crush on Naoto, who turns out to be a girl, he was first attracted to her when everyone, including Kanji, thought that she was a guy. Ellie! And last, but certainly not the least of us, is Ellie from The Last of Us. Introduced to us as this cool teenage daughter that every father would love to have, instead of what they usually get in the form of an emotional, difficult and awkward teen, Ellie is just an ordinary girl who somehow survived the horrors of the plague that is ravaging the world as we speak. But it isn't until the DLC do we finally get some more information on Ellie herself. Well, as it turns out, Ellie had herself a little girlfriend in the form of her best friend, Riley, as they end up having one of the most natural and, so what, same-sex romance scenes you'll ever come across in any video game. Much in the way of Chloe Price, Ellie is probably only in at number one for stealing the spotlight in The Last of Us and for being awesome, and while being a lesbian wasn't exactly something I was expecting from playing the standard game, it was something that most players cheered for and loved her even more for it. Personally, while I wasn't expecting Ellie to be into other girls, I kind of feel that it fits her personality quite well here, and so I'm not really that surprised in hindsight. But regardless of all of that, it doesn't change the fact that Ellie from The Last of Us takes the number one spot on this list. And once again, another video has come to an end, but if you're an emotional, difficult and awkward teenage girl, then like this video and subscribe as always. Don't forget that I'm on both Twitter and Patreon where you can be awkward too, and I'll be back with more shit content next week. But until then, see ya!